Hello everyone, this is Enea here, and in today's tutorial I'll teach you how to create this flower string art figure in Affinity Designer. String art is a form of geometric line art that consists of connecting the equidistant points in a figure. For this particular figure we're going to use a square grid in order to connect the equidistant points. Alright, so to get started we go to File New and we create a new composition. We give it 2000 by 2000 pixels in dimensions and we'll click on Create, and then we'll make sure that Snapping, Snap to Grid, Snap to Guides, Snap to Object Bounding Boxes, and Include Bounding Box Midpoints are enabled. And then we're going to set some horizontal and vertical center guides, so we we'll go to View, Guides, and where are the guides? And then we're going to set up the background, so we take the Rectangle tool, we set the fill to Black, and the Stroke to None, and then we go ahead and we create a black rectangle all over the composition. And then we're going to set up the grid. So we go to View, Grid and Axis. We check on Show Grid. We set the grid lines to a white color to make sure that it is visible. And then we go to the Basic tab to set the spacing. We set the spacing to 50 pixels and then we close the Grid Manager. And then we're going to draw the figure. So we press on Escape to unselect the background rectangle. And then with the rectangle tool again, we set the fill to None, and the stroke to White, and the stroke width to one point. And then we go ahead and we create a rectangle. We select it in the Layers panel, and we give it 500 by 500 pixels in dimensions. So 10 grid units by 10 grid units. And then we position it so that its right extremity snaps to the vertical guide and its bottom extremity snaps to the horizontal guide. And then we're going to start to connect the points. So we take the pen tool and then we're going to start by connecting the first point on the top extremity of the square to the first point on its right extremity and then we press on Escape to unselect. And then we connect the second point on the top to the second point on its right extremity. And then we press on Escape again. And then we connect the third point on the top to the third point on the right extremity. And then we press on Escape again. And then we continue the process. And we don't forget to press Escape after each line connected. And then we take the Move tool. And here, in the Layers panel, while holding Shift, we select all the lines that we've just created. And we press on Ctrl G to group them together. And then we press on Ctrl J to duplicate them. And then we flip the duplicated lines horizontally and vertically. And we position them so that they snap to the left and the bottom extremity of the rectangle. And then we select all three elements, the two group of lines as well as the square. And we press on Ctrl G to group them together. And we go here to enable Transform Origin. We set the rotation center in the middle of the composition. We press on Enter to bring out the Move Duplicate panel. We check on Duplicate. We set the number of copies to 3 and the rotation angle to 90 degrees. So now we have four petal units. And we select all four petals. We press on Ctrl G to group them together. And then on Ctrl J to duplicate. And we are going to rotate the duplicated group by 45 degrees. So now we have created the figure. The next step is going to be to add colors. So we select both groups and we press on Ctrl G to group them together. And then we take the gradient tool. We set the context to stroke as our figure is stroke only and the type to Radial. 
I'm going to set the center color to a lighter shade of pink. And the color at the extremity to a darker shade of pink. And if we want to make the figure more impactful, we can make the stroke a bit thicker. So I'll set the stroke to 1.5 points. And now we can hide the grid. So we go to View, Uncheck Show Grid to see the final effect of the figure. All right, so that was it for this tutorial. You learned how to create a flower string art figure in Affinity Designer. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Affinity Designer tutorials in the future. And until then, see you next time. Bye.